Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Nate. Well, thank you. I am delighted and honored to be here with you. I love the theme of this TED Talk series, The Future of Stories, because I've always believed that the stories we tell ourselves end up leading to the stories that we live. The future of stories are so important because our stories shape our future. And if we're totally engaged, they shape the future of our lives, our companies, our country, and the world. When Henry Ford said, if you believe, whether you believe that you can or cannot, you are right, what he was really talking about were the stories that we continually tell ourselves. There he is. <laughs> Allow me to share a brief version of my personal history. Um, when I was growing up as a young boy, there I am, uh, my dream was to be an ocean explorer. And I'm sharing this story with you because I want to illustrate how stories actually can inspire you to live your life's passions and accomplish great things. So I'd watch Jacques Cousteau on TV at night, and then I'd go to the beach and I'd snorkel for hours on end. Through college and MBA school, I worked as a diver, and I created the opportunity to personally explore hundreds of shipwrecks. And back then, I dreamed of building a business that would allow me to search the world's oceans looking for missing shipwrecks and their unknown or their forgotten stories. Today, as the precedent of Odyssey Marine Exploration, I'm living my childhood dream. And I have the great fortune to work for a company whose mission is to bring lost historic artifacts, valuable trade goods, and unknown or forgotten stories back to the light of day. Every day, we're out on the ocean and under the sea working to bring history back to life. And every day, I'm delighted and grateful to be where I am, getting to do what I get to do. I can tell you that the thrill of being out on one of our ships as we're unfolding the story of discovery, technology, and adventure on the high seas, it's even better than I thought it was going to be when I dreamed of this as a kid. Now, most recently, our story includes finding and recovering 48 tons of silver from the SS Gersapa. She was a World War II casualty sunk by a U-boat. The challenge here was we found the Gersapa in over 15,000 feet of water. That's almost three miles underwater. And to put that in perspective, that's deeper even than the Titanic. But it was our willingness to attempt to do what had never been done before that just recently, just two months ago, in fact, resulted in the deepest recovery of the most valuable cargo ever made from a shipwreck. In fact, I think it's going to be in the Guinness. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's going to be in the um, Guinness Book of World Records, actually, we found out. Um, and, and just so you know, that's what 48 tons of silver looks like. And that's the smile you get on your face when you put $40 million <laughs> worth of silver on your boat. So. Uh, Anyway, our explorations always uncover fascinating stories that were either unknown or, or long forgotten. As an example, in uh, 2003, the story of the SS Republic only came to light because of our discovery of a shipwreck about 100 miles off the coast of Georgia in about 1,700 feet of water. The SS Republic started her life, actually, as the SS Tennessee, and she was a technologically advanced ship for her day when she was launched in Baltimore Harbor in 1853. She had dual side-mounted paddle wheels, a unique walking beam engine, and a full sail configuration. And this propulsion configuration gave her tremendous speed. In fact, back in her day, she crushed the transatlantic speed crossing record. In 1861, the Republic was in the port of New Orleans when the Civil War broke out, and the Confederate Navy quickly seized her and converted her into a blockade runner. In April 1862, Admiral David Farragut led the successful invasion and the capture of the port of New Orleans, and when he saw this little known ship tied to the wharf there, he instantly recognized her value. He commandeered her and made her part of his fleet. Well, Farragut took a real liking to the ship, given her superior speed and maneuverability. In fact, he liked her so much, he designated her one of his flagships. The Republic went on to serve as part of Farragut's fleet in the decisive Civil War naval battle, the Battle of Mobile Bay. And it was during this naval engagement that Farragut issued the now world-famous command, 
Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Now, a little background on that. When Farragut was talking about torpedoes, he wasn't talking about what we know as torpedoes today, projectiles fired from submarines, but rather sea mines. So the Confederates had put out a field of sea mines around the entrance to Mobile Bay, and it was their defensive perimeter. Early in the naval engagement, one of Farragut's ironclads, actually pictured here lying on its side, uh, struck one of those uh, sea mines or torpedoes. And when it exploded, it instantly killed 90 of Farragut's men. And this was a crushing loss for Farragut. But he realized early in this battle, he had to spur the rest of his fleet into action and push them forward into combat. And that's when he issued the now world famous command, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Well, that day, Farragut's fleet, including the SS Republic, went on to decisively win the Battle of Mobile Bay. Now, stories have always inspired exploration, whether it was Marco Polo inspired by the tales of the wealth being created in the spice trade in the Far East, or Christopher Columbus searching for faster routes to those same riches. In fact, Columbus inadvertently discovered the new world, and in so doing, he left a record of triumph over discouragement and obstacles. In fact, Columbus said, by prevailing over all obstacles and distractions, one may unfailingly arrive at their chosen goal or destination. Now, both Marco Polo and Christopher Columbus went exploring with their eyes wide open. And when they did that, they went and, and found so much more than what they originally set out to find. They found new worlds, new cultures, new histories, even new medicines. So it strikes me now, there is an inextricable link between stories and exploration. On the one hand, we have these great explorers who were inspired to go on their missions of exploration because of stories they'd either heard or read. And on the other hand, explorers go out and take tremendous risk, but they always bring us back amazing stories that are shared for generations to come. At Odyssey, we're driven to explore because we believe, much like the great explorers of the past, that when you go exploring, you're going to make new discoveries and bring back new stories that are going to greatly benefit society. We also believe you must explore with your eyes wide open because just like Columbus finding the new world, when you go exploring with your eyes wide open, you'll oftentimes create a greater story than you ever set out to create. I'll give you an example from our annals. Um, the recovery of some deep ocean sediment from the shipwreck site of the SS Republic, the great ship whose story I just shared with you, yielded a truly surprising discovery. You see, we found this bacteria that had adapted to live in the harsh environment 1,700 feet under the ocean. And when we brought that bacteria back into our normal atmospheric environment, it not only survived, it actually reproduced, and this is extremely rare. Cancer researchers at a major medical institution have been working with this sample, and they actually believe that this may be a rare form of antibiotic. It's a protein, so they can replicate it in the lab, and it's quite small, so they say it shows good potential for penetrating disease cells. In early lab testing, this antibiotic has been killing most known forms of antibiotic-resistant staph infection. Now, will this initiative ultimately prove successful? We don't yet know, it's too early. But in a world where bacteria seems to be adapting to all of our known antibiotics at an alarming rate, the stakes are just too high for us not to push forward and try. So what future stories might that discovery write? Will future generations learn that a formerly incurable disease was finally cured as the result of a bacteria found while some guys were exploring a deep ocean shipwreck? Who knows, it remains to be seen. Exploration is the story that defines us, challenges us, and develops us every day. And I think that's how it is for all of us in our chosen pursuits. We're working, we're exploring, we're always having to overcome obstacles in ways that ultimately define us, in ways that provide us life stories that, future, that seed rather our future growth. <clears throat> Sadly, um, short-sighted government regulation and a lack of funding sources are beginning to conspire to threaten exploration in our country. 
In my lifetime, our country has gone from attempting to figure out how to put a man out into space and bring him back alive, to actually figuring out how to live in space for extended periods of time. But now, government-sponsored manned space exploration programs are being eliminated. There is hope, however. While public funding for these initiatives is drying up and for the foreseeable future, there is a new breed of entrepreneur who's stepping up to commercially fund space exploration. And there is no doubt in my mind that this commercially funded space exploration will extend our knowledge and will give us new stories and new discoveries that will be passed on to future generations. Now, explorers have always had to overcome challenges and obstacles. That's just the nature of exploration. But they didn't usually have to overcome challenges in the form of restrictive and strong government intervention that serves to discourage, if not prevent, certain forms of exploration. You know, as a young boy, I spent hours at the Jersey Shore looking for treasure. And while I never found anything of tremendous value, I always wondered, what was out there in the deep ocean? What would have happened to my story if I never sought an answer to that question? Or worse yet, what if someone told me to stop asking? What if my story had shriveled and died for lack of opportunity and encouragement? You know, our country was founded by explorers, and they were inspired by a dream of what was possible. Not necessarily probable, but possible. When our founding fathers wrote in our Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that was just a story. Self-evident to whom? Nobody on the face of the earth had ever formed a democracy this way until a compelling dream and a story of what was possible stirred the hearts of a handful of brave souls. What if we were to stop exploring and stop questioning? What would that mean for the future of stories? What would that mean for the future of our world? All of us here believe in the power of imagination and in the power of dreaming big. We believe in the future of stories. And each one of us can harness and present the excitement of discovery in ways that light up the next generation of future dreamers, explorers, and storytellers. If we believe that the great explorers of the past, we've benefited from their stories and their discoveries, then each one of us here has to do our part to preserve a society that encourages and rewards exploration. Now, there will always be naysayers. There will always be those who fearfully proclaim, the earth is flat, and if you sail over the horizon, you will certainly fall off the end and die. There will always be those who are willing to take the fruits of progress, but who are not willing to take the personal and economic risks associated with exploring new frontiers. To those people, I say, have faith. Have faith in your country's desire to push forward. Have faith that the true key to economic success lies in allowing entrepreneurs to take risks and make new discoveries. Have faith that we cannot solve the challenges of today and tomorrow with yesterday's fears. Have faith in the explorers of today. Now, I could not ask that here if I didn't think everyone here was an explorer in their own right. So let's stay the course. Let's push the boundaries of what is possible. Let's work together to explore the possibilities of tomorrow. And in doing that, let's write new and truly amazing stories. I offer you my heartfelt support as you courageously develop your stories. And in doing that, I wish you good luck and Godspeed.